That's good. And then we're going to get the presentation going. So let's see. Here, this, the back. The rest of why I got to come on in. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Tell them to come on in. <laughs> okay. Can everyone see my screen here? Looks good. Awesome. Stand yeah, if you want to come in. Say, oh, do you want to, if you want to join as well, that's. Yeah, yeah. I guess we, we would just, uh, we we're told we could give like a 20 second plug or something. Sure. To... Yeah, absolutely. So everyone, uh, we're currently, in addition to this event, previously we had our kickoff the career fairs event. We had a bunch of employer partners come and review student resumes. We have two people here now, which I, if you want to step into the screen so that people on Zoom can see you. Um, Want to give a quick plug for the presentation? So, yeah, hi, four students. Uh, I'm Joseph Roth, my yeah. colleague, the chair, Billy. Sure. Yes, um, and we're from YAI, Young Adult Institute. We're a, a nonprofit throughout the state of New York, uh, with many locations in Westchester County and the Bronx, uh, as well as uh, the other boroughs, uh, New Jersey, upstate New York. Our organization supports persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We're actually one of the 25 largest nonprofits in the state of New York and eighth largest health and human service nonprofit. Um, we have about 4,000 staff and we support about 20,000 people annually. So uh, being such a large organization with 4,000 staff, we of course have our administrative headquarters, one in White Plains, um, one in Midtown Manhattan, another in Brentwood, Long Island, uh, where we have administrative positions that we recruit for, uh, but probably 90 plus percent of our workforce are health and human service. Um, and so that would be first study psychology, social work, um, and other uh, related positions, healthcare related. Um, we're going to be at the career fair, the virtual one on Wednesday. Um, if you're interested in you know, administrative roles and, and health and human service roles, we hope to have the opportunity to, to talk to you. All right. And we'll be there Wednesday. So please join and join our room. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Y-A-I, right? Y-A-I, yeah. yes. Y-A-I, Y-A-I. That's hard to say just as a... <laughs> yeah, it's our uh, DBA. Our, our legal name is Young Adult Institute. Young Adult Institute. But... Remember that name, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you, much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> okay, now that we've had that special announcement, we'll get started on the presentation. So as they had mentioned, um, we have our virtual career fair uh, this Wednesday, February 8th from 12 to 3. So this is about how you could prepare for it, what to have ready beforehand to make sure that you're looking good for employers. So why participate in a career fair? To start, you're going to want to learn about companies and roles within your field of interest and therefore make professional connect connections within your field of interest. Um, networking is the gateway to career development. Once you start building your professional connections, those connections will connect you with other connections. Um, so it leads to endless opportunities. So you want to get your networking game going as soon as possible. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to pr practice presenting yourself professionally. So deciding how you want to articulate your experience and interests, deciding what you want to wear, what tone you want to establish, eye contact, all those things are super important for interviews in the professional world. You could start practicing here virtually. Um, and then lastly, getting insider information. Um, you know, employers who are going to be at the career fair may have info on jobs or internships opportunities that are currently in the works that may not be on Handshake or other job boards, um, and you'll be able to learn about that at the career fair. And then why do employers participate? Obviously the first reason is to meet all of you Fordham students. Um, they know how much hard work and dedication it takes to get here to Fordham. Um, so the fact that they're participating in this career fair already means that they see a lot of value in you, um, which I hope is reflected in how you see yourselves. Um, and because they see a lot of value in you, they wanna identify and recruit you for their future jobs and internship opportunities. So they're gonna be advertising their mission, their vision, um, and see how your experience kind of aligns with that. And you know if you resonate with that and wanna join their team. Staying organized. So you wanna treat your sessions like an interview. Um, making sure that your camera is on. The video is not a required thing for the virtual career fair, but it is nice for you know employers to be able to put a name to a face. Um, managing, you can manage your sessions through the Your Sessions tab on Handshake, which if anyone needs a tutorial of how to do that afterwards, you could just give me a thumbs up and we could go through that. Um, this is slightly incorrect. So sessions end after 20 minutes after they're scheduled, as I'll cover in the next slide. Um, employers, 
have chosen either group sessions. So they'll meet in a group with multiple students in a breakout room, and that'll be 30 minutes, or they have one on one sessions, which are 10 minutes. Um, and then, of course, check your technology ahead of time. Um, if there's anything I've learned from today, we've had a few technical issues. So always make sure that your audio is working, video is working, um, and Zoom call is in check. Okay, and as I covered in the previous slide, virtual fair, what's different? So you wanna be able to register and sign up for these sessions with the employers beforehand. Um, so some of the employers have selected group 30 minute sessions, and then again, individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, again, wanna make sure that your video, audio, and chat features are up to date and ready to go. And although video is not required, it is preferred um, just to make kind of that, develop that rapport. And this is straight from the employer's mouth. So employers um, have always reported that they've been really happy participating in our career fairs. They've said, love speaking with Fordham students. They're very well qualified. Students were interested and engaged. We've got amazing resumes and great students. So um, they've always been very excited to come and continue to come. We have a lot of repeat customers, if you will, um, and are excited to meet you. And then straight from the employer's mouths, advice and tips. Uh, so researching companies beforehand, um, this is super important because when you do your research, you're going to be able to come in with insightful questions. A lot of people will come in with very open-ended questions like, do you have a job for me? Or is this role open? Um, and a lot of the times what the employer or the recruiter is going to say is you could check our website. So that's not really maximizing your time very well. Um, so coming in with an insightful question that expresses, you know, curiosity and creativity, like, what is your company's most immediate needs and how can an ideal candidate, you know, meet those needs or what does growth and development look like at your company and, you know, how have you experienced that as an employer? Um, those types of questions are things they're looking for, which you could do and or you could formulate when you're doing your research beforehand. Prepping your elevator pitch. We're going to get to this in a few more slides, so I'll hold on that for now. Again, using video capabilities, um, if possible, to develop that rapport. And don't, don't ask what the company does. Know what they do beforehand by doing that, that extra research. Before the fair, doing your research. You can see who's participating in the fair by checking Handshake in advance. When you're signing up for either those group sessions or those one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, you'll see all the companies listed there. Um, research each, each company. Demonstrate your interest by asking really specific questions about the team, about their mission, about their vision, um, and know what they're hiring for. And also you can inquire as well about uh, future hiring plans they have. A lot of the times, especially in the beginning of the year now, uh, companies are in the midst of developing their budgeting for the upcoming year. So they're currently figuring out what roles they could uh, budget in there. Before the fair, again, you want to prep your materials, make sure you revise your resume, which you could do here through an event like today at the kickoff event, we had employers um, reviewing students' resumes. You could also book an appointment one-on-one -on -one with one of the career counselors here. We'd be happy to take a look at your resume or cover letter. Um, you want to make sure you're uploading your resume to Handshake so that employers have ready access to that. Um, and your digital presence is more important than ever. So in addition to uploading your resume to Handshake, making sure you have a photo, um, any, you know, activities, your GPA, I'll make sure that is all on Handshake. During the fair, you want to make sure you're logging into sessions on time, um, demonstrating professionalism. Practice virtual networking. Um, you could do that, again, kind of like you could create a, or have an appointment here with one of the career counselors regarding resume help. You could also do a mock interview um, and have kind of a discussion like that. Um, and in a group session, most importantly, you want to allow other students to take the floor. Um, you don't want to dominate the space by asking questions, even though we definitely encourage you to get off mute and, and ask those questions, um, but just making sure that everyone has fair time and a turn. And then you can also use the community tool to chat with others. And then after the fair, you always want to follow up with thoughtful and intentional communication. Um, so mentioning the specifics of what you spoke about with the employer, not just saying thank you for your time. You could just say something more expansive, like thank you for discussing X, Y, and Z with me about X department. Um, make sure you're really mentioning the specifics so that you show that you were paying attention um, and that you know, you're expressing interest in, in what they said. Um, attach your resume to the follow-up email. And again, also I could show you all on Handshake um, or when you go and sign up for a session on Handshake, you should be able to see the recruiter's name. So before logging into the session during the career fair, I would take down their name so then you could look them up later, connect with them on LinkedIn and also get their email and, and stuff like that. So you can send out that, that afterward communication. 
And then finally, your 30 second elevator pitch. What you want to include is your introduction, who you are, what you study, what school you go to, um, your unique qualifications and fit for the role. What experiences do you have? What skill sets have you developed as a result of your experiences? And how that makes you a fit for the company and for the role, which is going to be a result of the research you do. Um, and authenticity is key. You know, at the end of the day, people are really looking for, or employers are looking for students who are really going to align with their vision and mission. Um, and so you being your most authentic and genuine self is going to make, help them determine whether or not you are the best fit. So we have a little example here of the 30 second pitch. So hi, my name is Anita Smith and I'm a junior English major at Fordham College Rose Hill. I fell in love with publishing after working on the RAM, Fordham student newspaper, for the past two years, and now I'm really excited to try my hand at book publishing. I know Simon & Schuster's internship pro program application opens next week. Do you have any suggestions for me to keep in mind when working on my application? So as we can see, the first sentence, she's introducing herself, making it really clear but concise, her year, her, year, or her, her area of study. Um, she's mentioning the experience she has working with the Fordham RAM uh, newspaper, and then she also showed that she's done some research. She says, I know that your internship program application opens next week. And what suggestions do you have? Um, so that's a really good example of an effective pitch. And I think that concludes our presentation for today. But if you all have any questions, I could stop screen sharing right now and make sure to follow us on social media. You could see all of our upcoming events. We have quite a few workshops in addition to our virtual career farm Wednesday. And I will open the floor. We also have two people in the room, just for anyone who sees me looking over here. We do, we have two other students in person. Okay, we have a chat here. What are some good questions to ask during a one-on-one? -on -one? I would say that's specific to the employer and specific to what you're asking. If you're asking about an internship opportunity, an immediate opportunity or a future opportunity, but again, I would say the insightful questions like I had brought up before in terms of what are the most immediate needs that your company has and how could someone within my field of interest contribute to helping you with those needs. Um, asking about growth and development opportunities. Employers really love when students come in and, and they want to know how they can grow within the company because that shows that they would be committed to staying with that company for an extended period of time. I would say really eliminate trying to ask questions regarding what the company could give you in terms of, you know, I guess it's asking simple, simple questions that are, are more centered focused. Try to see, ask questions to see how you could help the company and how your values and what you've done in the past resonate with the company, if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, and the more sample questions are in uh, the chat for you to, to refer to. Yeah, of course. Anybody else? Yeah, sure. Um, if you find a connection outside of your company looking for different recruiting, mm -hmm. so say I'm meeting with someone from KPMG who wants to school for two classes at Penn State. Okay. Can you leverage a spark outside of the traditional realm of like the company itself to start to engage, start to engage with that? Yeah, so just, I don't know if everyone heard that on Zoom, but the question was, if you have, a, if you already have an established connection outside of something like career fair, so the student had said that they had had a connection through their cousin at a company and they want to know how to foster that over time without being on a virtual career fair, um, I would say just you want to maintain consistent contact with that person, even when you don't need them for an internship or job opportunity, make sure you're always following up with them. And also make sure that you're standing out from other people. You know, for example, not given that everything is online these days, not a lot of people get asked to go out to coffee. So if you have a chance to connect with that person, say, let me take you out to lunch. That's a really unique thing that, you know, not a lot of young people are doing these days. Um, so just making sure that you're maintaining that consistent contact, even if it's just checking in to say a little bit of a hello, it's just making sure that you're always at the front of their mind. Um, and then when you know you do see a job pop up on their job board or you do hear about something at their company, 
you could send your resume right away and it's not going to be awkward. It's not going to be like, there's been time lapsed. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have had that communication. It's like a friend, you know, like you, you consistently keep up with a friend, but you know, if you don't keep up with them for a year and then ask them to hang out, it'd be a little bit awkward. Um, so that would be my advice for a situation like that. And I don't know if you have anything else, Sharita, to yeah, add. <laughs> I can add something else. So I would definitely suggest if you know somebody, if you're meeting in the one-on-one -on -one session, um, bring that up. Oh, my um, friend or my cousin also works at KPMG and has a great experience. If you know the person's name and they basically give you permission to share that, definitely want to communicate that as well. And this really kind of prompted me to why I want to move my career within the company because I've been exposed to others that work here. Um, something else I would say, if you're in a group session, so if it's a group information session on Handshake, really important to keep in mind what is going to be my script. Because if there's more than X amount, 15 students in a session, they can't see you. You can only see them. So you have to actively use the chat. So I usually say kind of like pre-prompt, you know, write up maybe questions you want to ask beforehand. Um, so basically you can kind of like build your script out for what you want to say to the recruiter. Mm -hmm. So when you write these things out, you could say, oh, you know, want to start off saying, hi, nice to meet you. Um, excited to be here at the session. You know, my name is so-and-so. So basically that's the first thing. Start making sure you ask questions. Um, of course, the next piece of it is you want to go into Handshake. And when you go into Handshake, it tells you the recruiter's names. So you want to also follow up on the LinkedIn you know, after and basically look up their name and write them a thank you. Because remember, this is virtual. So how can I keep that conversation going? So the whole point, if you're in a group session, is really to try to re-engage them. So maybe we could show them how to like what how to do that. Yeah. yeah, there is one question here. Um, you know, what? let me hold off on this one question, Emma, just so that I can show everyone on Handshake how to do that. And when I say how to do that, I hope everyone heard what uh, Sharita had just said here in terms of making sure you have the recruiter's information so that you could send a follow-up thank you note and connect with them on um, on all of their socials. Let's see. Go back here and then let me just escape. Okay, perfect. Let me pull this down. There we go. Okay. Nope. Oh, here we go. Perfect. I have it pulled up. So let's say you wanted to do a group session with Good Shepherd Services. When you scroll down, you'll see speakers. Denise Taylor is the representative for Good Shepherd Services. So you could look her up on LinkedIn. Um, and if you can't find them on LinkedIn just by writing Denise Taylor, what I always do is Google, just write as much information as you know, Denise Taylor, Program Director, <laughs> Good Shepherd Services, and something will come up. Um, and that's how you could get their contact info. Or I'm sure you could just also ask for it as well um, during the session to, to you know, have follow-up communication with them. Make sure you ask for their contact follow-up in the sessions. The reason why, as Career Center, we're not able to give out their contact without their permission. So it's really important to ask that if you're in a chat session or if you're in a one-on-one -on -one session, can I contact you? Can I write down your email to follow up? Because they have to basically give it to you directly. Perfect. And then we had one more question here. Let me get to that right now in the chat. So Emma asks, is it okay to tell the employer that you have no prior experience in your field of interest? I would say to... Perhaps refrain mentioning that you would have no experience. I would always, my main philosophy in life is what you focus on grows. So if you focus on the idea of I have no experience in this area, that's the focus. And what you want to focus on is I have transferable skills from other experiences that can make me great for my field of interest. Um, so I would say if you have other experiences where skills overlap, then that's appropriate. But I don't think it's necessary to point out I don't have experience in this field of interest. And if there's a follow-up question to that, feel free to put in the chat or come off mute as well. Is there anything else from anyone? You're welcome, Sarah. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, if that is it, I will log off for now. Like I said, we're recording this. So this will go on our YouTube channel, um, Fordham Career Center. That's our YouTube channel, Fordham Career Center. Um, so it'll be posted there. And then I could also share the slides afterwards with you all in a follow-up email. Um, but if that is all for now, 
best of luck. Thank you so much for coming. And we hope to see you for the virtual career fair on Wednesday, the 8th from 12 to 3. And what was that? The student support room. Yeah. If you have any if, if you have you, any problems during the oh, well, right. fair, yes. you can always log into our Zoom room. Um, it will show you when you log into the actual fair um, support room um, as a corner in the actual fairs. So you can log in and just press that button. And so if you have any problems or if you have any questions, you can always log right into that Zoom room and we're there to help you right on the spot. Awesome. Everyone get that? <laughs> Great, well, thank you so much for coming. We can't wait to see you then. Um, also, as a follow-up to the virtual career fair, if you all saw on our email blast, we will be having a Starbucks bar afterwards to decompress once you're done. Um, we'll be giving out gift cards to the first 25 students. So make sure you come to the career center afterwards um, and we'll be here to greet you and hear what it's all about, how, how everything went. Um, but in the meantime, hope you all have a great day and we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.